there, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Brutus Monroe video. Today I'm going to be focusing on some aqua pigments, but let's talk about the stamp set we're going to be using today. This stamp set is called the Vintage Floral Background, and I just love it and I thought it would be perfect for painting. Because we're using aqua pigments, we're going to be use the, using the aqua pigment paper. And then here are just a few of the aqua pigments that I had grabbed out. I knew for sure that I was going to be using some periwinkle, some sunflower, some lime, and some watermelon. And these are from the metallic line. Uh, new to me and so excited to have them. And I'm also going to be using this Brutus Monroe Night Shift Green Embossing Powder. But let's get started with getting our background prepped. I'm going to shake up my aqua pigments really well so that I can make sure that everything is distributed nicely. I'm going to put down a little bit of lime and then I'm also going to put down a little bit of the sunflower on my waffle flower media mat. Spritz that with some water. I'm even going to grab a paintbrush just to kind of swirl that around just a little bit. And then I'm going to grab my aqua pigment paper and I'm going to smush it right down into that. I want to do what I like to call underpainting. Uh, and so I'm just trying to make sure that I have a nice base of color down. I don't want it to be too dark. I want it to be, that's why I chose the lime and the sunflower so that my background would be fairly subtle, but I plan to paint over the top of it. So these are the colors that I chose. And I'm gonna put down a little bit more sunflower because I want that yellow to be a little bit more prominent. And I'm heat setting that in between and I'm also gonna just splatter some of that as well. And then we'll let that dry. But take a look at the shimmer. I'm gonna turn on my phone so you can take the, the, the um, flashlight on my phone and look at all that shimmer that is in those aqua pigments. Now these are, like I said, this is a metallic line. If you don't like the shimmer, they also have plenty of the non-metallic. My background was heat set, so it's nice and dry. And then I covered that with my uh, anti-static powder bag. And then I'm just testing it. So I put a little bit of that embossing powder over the top to make sure that it doesn't stick anywhere. And now we're going to use our embossing ink on our background. I have my background. It is upside down. So the stamp side would be facing up. I ink that up really well. And then I'm going to stick my paper right on top of that. This is a one shot deal, kids. So I want to make sure I do it really well. And I'm pressing nice and firm, making sure that it doesn't move and that I got good coverage. And we will see here in a second when I cover this with the embossing powder. So I'm covering it. And so far, so good. Now, if you've never used the Night Shift embossing powder before, it goes on black. It looks black. And it's even in certain lights going to look black. But then you're going to shift it around in light, in the light, and it's going to look like this really nice dark olive green. It actually reminds me of our car. We have a CRV, and most lights it looks black. But when you hit the light in a certain way, it's definitely an olive green. So... I'll just heat set this till that is smooth and melted and then I will show you up close how this looks. So it looks black there but then you shift it in the light a little bit and you can definitely see the green which is so, so cool. And isn't the detail on this stamp just gorgeous? Alright, so let's get to painting. I'm going to put down a little bit of paint into my wells. I've got that periwinkle and I also have some watermelon. And then I'm just gonna just start painting. I have a number four. This is my silver black velvet brush. And I'm just slapping down the color. I'm not too worried about doing any shadowing or shading because well, you know, water, um, watercolor, I almost said watermelon. <laughs> watercolor works in layers. And now I want watermelon. <laughs> no, but anyway, watercolor works in layers. So I have my first base coat, which is that underpainting down below. And then I put that watermelon on top and I have to say I really love how it layers so in some areas that pink or that watermelon is really prominent and in other areas it really picks up some of that yellow undertone under it which is so cool really uh, and it can even shift the or you know if you work the paper enough it can change the color entirely and probably give you an orange almost I wouldn't want to do that over the green areas with this pink because I could get brown but I do like how those are layering very nicely I'll start grabbing the periwinkle and I'll do the same thing with that. And in the lighter areas, you can almost see the green hues popping through. But I love doing painting like this because honestly, it takes some of the work out of it because you'll see I'm actually not going to color a couple of the flowers. Uh, I am gonna come in a little bit later with some Arteza colored pencils just to really add a little bit more depth but we're gonna come in with a little more line and we're gonna paint those um, leaves to make those a little bit more green. But again, I'm gonna come in with some colored pencil 
when the time comes, when this is all painted and nice and dry. I'm also, that other color that you see up there is lavender. I didn't show myself putting it up there, but that color is lavender. So we will grab some of that here in a second after we've gotten all of our green painted in. But so far, I'm really, really enjoying this kind of painting. It's so therapeutic, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. I'm telling you, more art would always be better. So here I'll bring in some of that lavender. And the lavender is also one of the metallics, so it has lots of shine and shimmer in it as well. Um, and I thought about bringing in some of my paints that aren't metallic, but I really mostly wanted to stick to these metallics. I also bring in some aqua pigment in the color white and it does a really nice job of actually layering on top of this as well. It will pick up some of those undertones underneath it, but it does stay pretty white, which is nice. And I think I will definitely use that white for some splatter and for some other painting, because I know that this aqua pigment in the color white looks really nice on dark cardstocks. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I just recently got it, so this is my first actual time really playing with it. And so far, so good. Happy Cassie here. Mama likey. All right, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to bring in my colored pencils. And all this is really going to do is just add a little bit more drama in some of those areas. I'm choosing colors that are fairly similar to the ones around them, just maybe a, a shade or so darker. So I wanted to keep this flower yellow, just like the background, but I did bring in just that orange colored pencil. And I'm bringing it only from the base up and kind of getting lighter at the tips. I should have probably zoomed in, but I think you can get the gist of what it is I'm doing. And then I'm gonna bring in a darker magenta color and just use that on all those flowers that I painted that were that watermelon aqua pigment. So we'll do that all around. And it's really starting to take shape. The more colored pencil that I bring in, the more color that I bring in, the more it's really starting to come to life. And you can really start to see those flowers really pop. It's amazing what color can do. And so then we'll also bring in a lavender shade and that's just gonna deepen up some of those edges or the, the inside bits. And then um, we'll even add in a blue later on too. So I don't know about you, but all, in all this quarantine, I have definitely been doing a lot more painting and coloring. I'm going to splatter some of that white all across that background, and then I'm also going to grab some of the periwinkle and splatter just a little bit of that on there too. That adds just a little bit more texture to the piece. And then we're going to clean up our mess and let that dry so that we can move on to cutting down our panel. But look at that. Isn't that cool? Turned out fun. Now I'm going to grab some of my Not Your Mama's heavyweight cardstock. I did recently buy some more. So happy for that. This is 130 pounds. So it is a very heavyweight card base. I love it. But because it's so heavyweight, we are going to score it at four and a quarter inches. I'm going to flip it and score it and do it again because I want to make sure that I get a good crease so that way the card stays closed when I need it to stay closed. I do like to do stuff on the inside, so I've got that stamp upside down again. I'm going to ink that up with some of my Psyche Simon Hurley ink, and then I'm going to blot the edge with my microfiber cloth. I'll flip it, the paper upside down, and just really rub, and then you get this really pretty stamping on the one edge. I'm going to clean it off using some of my um, squeaky clean and my microfiber cloth, and then I'll flip the stamp and do the exact same thing so that I have it on both sides on the inside of that card. So once again, inked it up, blot the edge so I don't have such a harsh edge, and then we'll stick our cardstock down and just really rub that with our fingers. And then when we lift it away, we'll have this beautiful impression of the flowers on both edges, which is so cool. All right, I do wanna have a sentiment on the outside, of course. So I'm taking the sentiment that came with the vintage floral background that says focus on the good, which is what we all need to be doing right now, right? I'll ink that up with some Detail Raven ink, and then I'm gonna grab out one of my foundation circle dies from Brutus Monroe, tack that down with a little bit of my purple tape, and so far, I'm really enjoying this purple tape. I still have a ton of washi, so I'm not sure um, what we'll do there, but I'm really liking the, the purple tape. And then I have my, my sentiment all ready to go to put on the outside. 
Now, because my aqua pigment paper was pretty well warped with all the water that I had put on it, I decided to grab some 1 4th inch, inch score tape and put that all over the back. And then I'll just peel off all of the release paper. This really strong adhesive will keep the paper from warping and kind of looking kind of funky. You could use liquid glue, but you definitely want to make sure that once you put it down, you put it underneath a bunch of heavy stuff so that it wouldn't pop up anywhere. So I put it all the way against the right hand edge. So we have a nice border on the, the top, the bottom and the left hand side. I am going to pop up my sentiment with a little bit of foam tape since I didn't pop up anything else. And uh, so I'm just using the Brutus Monroe foam tape. What little I have left of that roll. I did buy a new roll, so I'm excited to pop into that one. Then I'm just going to use my paper piercer to pull off all of the release paper on this foam tape. And then I'll put my uh, sentiment down on the front of the card. I'm not going to stop there though. I do decide I want to add a little bit of embellishment. So I'm grabbing out some uh, prism sequins from Brutus Monroe in the color green. And I'm just going to pop those down with my crystal katana along with some Nouveau white blizzard glitter drops. And so that way when it the glitter ugh, when the glitter drops pop through the center of that sequin, there'll be a little bit of shine in there as well. And once I'm done with that, that's going to finish off our card for today. I loved putting some focus on my aqua pigments today and these metallics do not disappoint. So if you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.